morning we uh, <clears throat> are going to meditate upon uh, a very powerful uh, uh, revelation about uh, moving forward see unless we believe we cannot move forward the psalmist said uh, i would have fainted unless i believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living hallelujah so fainting doesn't bring any uh, change in our life uh, fainting only uh, makes us give up uh, hope but uh, believing is all about hope trying to stay uh, established in faith and uh, holding on to the word uh, in moving forward so there are six um, truth uh, in uh, believing and moving forward uh, let us uh, see those uh, one by one uh, first one we'll start by seeing truth based revelation matthew chapter 16 verse 16 we'll read and start matthew chapter 16 verse 16 and simon peter answered and said Thou art the Christ, the Son of the Living God. Let us stand and honor this word of God, my Father. We thank and praise you, Father, for this precious word you have given us this morning. We receive it with thanksgiving in our heart. We pray, Father, let the Spirit of God speak to us the truth and strengthen our spirit, and we live a life of dominion. We pray, Father, and open our hearts and our spirit that your truth may enter uh, our spirit. we wait for your truth with uh, thanksgiving and with gladness in jesus name amen 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 let us be seated hallelujah so the first point being truth based revelation matthew chapter 16 verse 16 we read and simon peter answered and said thou art the christ the son of the living god hallelujah peter had answered and said whom did he answer he answered jesus jesus was the one who asked the disciples who do they say i am so all the 11 of the disciples gave a wrong answer and the only one who gave the right answer was uh, peter peter said thou art the christ the son of the living god and for that what did jesus say it is not your flesh and blood which revealed this it's my father in heaven which revealed this to you hallelujah so as long as we have a revelation of the truth from the spirit of god we will not see change peter in the midst of 12 disciples he was considered the one who had the truth he is the one who was the closest to, to jesus and he was the head of all the disciples those days uh, jesus called peter for everything if he wanted something it was peter who was called the reason is uh, peter, jesus knew he had the truth when he said uh, when 500 of the people who believed jesus left him because they could not stand by the truth what jesus spoke jesus asked now why don't you also leave the two dwell disciples were asked to leave i don't think you also have to stay you also leave and peter is the only one who answered saying where will we go lord you have the word of life hallelujah so he had the revelation truth he was different so if you have the truth inside you you will be different so he is the one who um, um was um, after the lord jesus uh, died and rose again peter was the one who uh, did many many miracles uh, in the way what jesus did on this earth hallelujah the first a um, sermon itself he saved 3000 uh, unbelievers got saved miracles happened one who uh, was sitting on the 
um, temple beautiful, he rose up and he leaped and jumped and praised God. Hallelujah. So these miracles were because of the revelation of the truth in his spirit. So if we have to see any change and we have to move forward, we need the truth. Hallelujah. Unless we believe the truth, we cannot see a change in our life. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. So there are many places where uh, uh, each one of us have uh, bondages. We don't, uh, uh, we are not in a position to move forward. For that, uh, we need the truth. While we are in a situation or a problem or facing a challenge, we need to, uh, more than asking God to uh, uh, deliver us from this uh, situation or the challenges or problems, we need, we need to ask God, Lord, give, us, give me the truth, Lord. I know, Lord, if I have the truth forever and ever, I will never be in this situation. Hallelujah. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free eternally. Hallelujah. Forever and ever you will be delivered in that area. The devil cannot bind you in that place anymore. Hallelujah. So the truth-based revelation is what we need to um, desire for. So that is what will bring a change in our life for good, which will profit uh, every area of our life and which will deliver us from the bondages, which will uh, bring a profit to our life. Our God is a God who teaches us how to profit. And how does he teach us how to profit? By teaching us the truth. Once we have the truth, we will never have lack. Money will just flow in. When you have a need, God will supply. Hallelujah. It's all you, all you need is the truth. Hallelujah. If you want, uh, uh, if you want uh, peace, uh, you need the truth. If you need success, you need the truth. Hallelujah. So, truth-based revelation is the first point. Second point is truth-based words. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. Let us read. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Yes, a man shall be satisfied with the good. With good by the fruit of his mouth, by the words of his mouth. Fruit of his mouth means by the words of his mouth. Jesus said you shall know them by their fruit. Hallelujah. That means by the words, what they speak. Hallelujah. A man shall be satisfied. If you are going to live a satisfied life, a fulfilled life, you need to be careful about the words which come out of your mouth. The words which come out of our mouth will build our path which is going forward. While we move forward, where we are moving forward will be decided by the fruit of our mouth, with the words of our mouth. It says, yes, and the recompense of man's hand. Every man, whatever he does with his hand, God will recompense. They, they shall be rendered unto those things, whatever is due to him will be given to him. It will be recompensed. His hard work will be, will be certainly rewarded. But there's a greater way to see uh, the goodness of God in our life. That way is by making sure that we take care of the words which comes out of our mouth. We will be more than satisfied in our life if the words of the mouth come according to the truth. Like uh, if you, there's no word called impossible for us because the Lord has destroyed the power of the devil is defeated the devil at the cross for our sake. That uh, the devil has got no power over us and over our things. Forever and ever we will live a life of victor victory on this earth. So while we say it is not possible, I don't think it is possible, it is impossible. That means uh, we are confessing defeat. If you say it is possible, it is victory. 
if thou if thou canst believe all things are possible for him that believeth hallelujah it's all based on what we believe and we speak it says i speak because i believe hallelujah because I, because of the fullness of the heart the mouth speak it hallelujah whatever is inside your heart your mouth will speak the mouth will not speak those things which are not in the heart if you speak faith it means it is in your heart if you speak unbelief that means it is in your heart so a man will be satisfied with the good words which are coming out of his mouth hallelujah so may not be uh, a situation today but certainly from tomorrow you're paving a way to live a life a satisfied life by the words what you speak from this moment onwards hallelujah he speak and it is done he commanded and stood fast that's what is spoken about god in the word of god and god says if you uh, if you separate the precious from the vile i'll be as your mouth hallelujah or you will be like my mouth so when you speak it will be like i speak this is only moses spoke but the words which came out of moses's mouth was god's voice everything happened according to what god wants to happen when moses spoke hallelujah so because he had separated the precious from the vile hallelujah so a man shall be satisfied with the good with good by the fruit of his mouth truth based words which has to come from our mouth which will give us a great blessings the third point we are going to uh, meditate on is truth based prayer psalms chapter 69 verse 13 psalms chapter 69 verse 13 but as for me my prayer is unto thee o lord in an acceptable time o god in the multitude of thy mercy hear me in the truth of thy salvation but as for me my prayer is unto thee o lord in an acceptable time o god in the multitude of thy mercy hear me in the truth of thy salvation so here we see the psalmist's revelation about two things one is his great mercy and the second one is talking about the truth of thy salvation hallelujah sozo means salvation it contains five areas there is deliverance healing protection preservation and goodness in all areas of our life so whatever you need on this earth for your life it is there in salvation and it says hear me in the truth of thy salvation so each and every uh, uh, part in this five uh, areas has a truth in, in in about deliverance there is a truth about healing there is a truth about protection there is a truth preservation there is a truth and uh, for having all the goodness of the lord in our life there is a truth so it, your psalmist says hear me in the truth of their salvation so your prayer should be based on two revelations one is he's a god who is rich in mercy hallelujah he says but as for me my prayer is unto thee o lord in an acceptable time o god in the multitude of thy mercy in the multitude you are a god who is rich in mercy because of your mercy which is multitude which is great god of your great mercies hear me hallelujah god hears us because of his great mercy and your prayer should be based on the truth of god's salvation hallelujah your prayer should be based on god's truth about salvation that unless the truth is there in your prayer you cannot receive what you need because god cannot understand your language god will understand only his language 
So when you say, Lord, it is written according to this word, I pray and ask in Jesus' name, and I receive it by faith. In other words, you're reminding God and saying, Lord, it is written in this word, according to this truth, I claim, I claim by faith this for myself. I inherit this heritage which you kept for me, hallelujah, which belongs to me. The truth is trying to say, Lord, this is, uh, this is kept for me. This belongs to me. So I take a claim on that. And God hears because of his great mercy. He hears our prayer. And if it is tooth braced, and he will give it to us. And we will move forward. Hallelujah. There will not be a prayer which will not be answered, which is truth based. Hallelujah. So, again, where we have to focus is try to get the truth into our spirit while we pray. And if you know the truth, you have what you need. Hallelujah. For, let us say, for healing, we know, by your stripes, Lord, we were healed. And for uh, peace, what will you say? The chastisement of our peace was upon you, Lord. You are punished. You took all our punishment at the cross that we may have peace. There is no peace in your, in your family or in your life. I'll say, Lord, the chastisement of my peace was upon you. All the punishment which I have to go through in my life and I have to lose my peace, you have taken upon the cross that I may have peace in my life. Hallelujah. Truth based prayer. And you take claim on, based on this truth and you receive it, you inherit it. The fourth point we'll go to. Make room for more with the truth. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Hallelujah. Then enlarge there. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen their cords and strengthen thy stakes. Hallelujah. So here it's talking about uh, the tent is basically your, uh, your spirit. Enlarge and give more place in your spirit and for desiring what you need in your life. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. Hallelujah. What is a desire? Desire is a need. A lust is an excess. But desire is a need. That you need it. Am I right? Hallelujah. Let us say um, a home is a need. A conveyance is a need on this earth. It's not a luxury anymore. But asking for uh, 10 homes is a lust. Asking for 10 different vehicles is a lust. But if you need one roof over your head, and if you need one vehicle to travel, that is a need. So if we do not have that, we can say, Lord, I decide. I'd make room in my heart and desire that I need this in my life. And it says, let them stretch forth the curtains of their habitations. Spare not, lengthen their cords and strengthen their stakes. Stretching forth the curtains of their habitations. In other words, it talks about uh, uh, not only desiring, also, uh, uh, stretching forth the curtains is basically covering it. Your habitation is basically a place where you are going to live. You are living in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Your curtains means you need to be covered by the presence of God. Well, well in prayer, in the presence of God, you are covering yourself and saying, Lord, this is what I have a desire in my heart. And I, it says, strengthen, strengthen, lengthen their cords and strengthen their sticks. Lengthening the cords is basically trying to stretch your faith. 
Strength, strength, strengthening the cord stakes means uh, it is uh, establishing your faith. How do you lengthen the cords? The word is the cord. The word is the rope. Hallelujah. To hold on to. You pull the cord and tighten it and uh, you, you establish the tent. So here it talks about you hold on to the word of God and you will be established in faith. Saying, Lord, till I receive my desire, I'm not going to let go of this. I'm going to establish this in my faith. I'm going to be established here in my faith. Jacob did that. He said, unless you bless me, I'm not going to leave you. He held on tight. And he was blessed. So here, we holding on to the word is holding on to God. With our faith. And standing strong on that place is basically established and saying, Lord, I will not let this go. What I have decided, according to the truth, I will receive it and I will inherit it. Your prayer, which is based on the truth, by saying, Lord, I have, I'm making more room for myself in my heart. I desire, hallelujah. Your desiring for a greater income is not wrong. Am I right? If it is for the glory of God. If you are going to decide, saying, Lord, I'm already earning a lakh of rupees. I want 10 lakhs. So why do you need that? For the glory of God. I will be in a position to be a, a more, better giver for God's work. If your heart is very clear for that, God will give you that 10 lakhs. Hallelujah. You know why? God wants to see that his name is glorified through you and to see whether you have a faithful hand. If you establish there saying that I am faithful Lord, I will give to the kingdom. Then your 10 lakhs may become 50 lakhs per month, your income. Hallelujah. So God has got, sky is not the limit for God. When God blesses, God blesses and blesses and blesses. Because you should not have the love for the money. Your love, for, your love should be towards God. Hallelujah. That you show only by giving to God's work. Your giving is not, it's not based on what money you're giving. It's based on the faith you have on God. That means you are revealing your love for God. Your love for his kingdom. Your money doesn't matter there. But your commitment matters. Lord, I know the truth. I know the commitment I have towards you. And I will stand by that. Then God sees your faithfulness and the honesty in what you are standing for. And God says, this person has to be blessed. Hallelujah. So... <clears throat> Making a desire should be based on the truth. Fifth point, let us see truth about the covenant. Truth about the covenant, Galatians 3, 15 to 16. Galatians chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So, uh, the covenant, what God made, the first covenant, was with Adam. And that covenant was a covenant in the time of innocence, God said, you eat of all this tree, but just don't eat from the tree of knowledge. And uh, everything will be according to your desire, you will receive it. It is a covenant. God came on asking, how are you, Adam? How are you doing today? Is everything well? But because of disobedience to God and his word, Adam was thrown out of the covenant. His covenant was in the Garden of Eden. The minute he was thrown out of the Garden of Eden, 
the covenant with him and God had broken. Curse came in. This covenant was established again on this earth by calling Abraham. And ask, God asked Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, leave your relatives, and come and go to the place where I show you. And Abraham believed God and he stepped out and he walked with God. And he went to the place where God asked him to be. That was an evidence of obedience to God. By being obedient to his voice, he revealed his faith in God. See, you will not obey unless you have faith. Am I right? Why did Eva disobey God's word? When devil said, uh, when, when uh, Satan came and said, you know, if you eat this, you'll have knowledge, you'll become like God, you'll know good and evil. So, Eve doubted God. She did not have faith in God. She did not trust God. Oh, God doesn't want me to become, be like him. That's why he said not to eat from this uh, uh, tree of knowledge. So let me eat and see. Let me get some knowledge and be like God. There, there was a trust issue there. She stepped out of faith. And Adam followed. He also stepped out of faith. So here we see Abraham stepping out in faith, which is called as obedience. In other words, obedience will always make you uh, commit to the person who has called you. Hallelujah. When God called Abraham, he obeyed because he had faith in God. Let's look at our situation. When God had made and prepared uh, salvation on this earth through Jesus at the cross. Jesus dying for us. And the word had been revealed to us. You know, Jesus came for you. He died for you. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Your sins have been forgiven. You have been, your sins have been paid for. Your curse has been broken. You just believed what God did through Christ Jesus on the cross. And you obeyed. You accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Your obedience to that word was your faith in God. So God links this and that, what Abraham did and what you did, as the same. So that is why everyone who is in Christ Jesus is a seed of Abraham. The blessing is for whom? For Abraham's seed. It says here, now to Abraham and his seed, not seeds. It says, and his seed. That seed is the Christ, everyone who's in Christ. Where the promise is made, he said, not to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So the covenant which God made with man is through Christ. The Lord Jesus was the one who died for us to make this covenant with, the, with God Almighty. What is the covenant? It's called as covenant of peace. In other words, prosperity in all areas of our life. That is what we said in salvation. There are five areas which brings prosperity in all areas. So this covenant is based on the truth. Understanding that you need to believe God that Jesus has been sent for you. And unless you believe him, then you get into this covenant. If you don't believe Jesus has been sent for you, that means you don't come into the covenant. So everyone who is in Christ Jesus has believed the Lord Jesus as his Lord and Savior has stepped into this covenant. And that is what it says. Uh, you have received the blessing of Abraham through Christ Jesus because Abraham's seed is Christ. Hallelujah. So going forward in life, one of the ways to move forward in life is based on this covenant. Because we are sure that 
we have blessing of Abraham in our life. God has blessed us and has destroyed and broken every curse in our life. Every disobedience has been dealt with. Jesus paid for all our disobedience, for all our sin. Dis um, sin is nothing else, disobedience. While we well, Adam disobeyed God and stepped out of the covenant, after that, everything what we did, mankind did, is totally rebelling God and they were not in with peace with God, they were in war with God. That is why God says, uh, salvation is uh, trying to escape from the wrath of God. What is salvation? Escaping from the wrath of God. We are coming into, the, into peace with God. Salvation. And saying, Lord, I know Jesus came and died for me. I know through him my sins are forgiven. He's paid for my sins. Wages of sin is death. I believe it. Now I will obey I, I obeyed your operation at the cross. Now I'll obey your word. By this we keep the covenant and we receive whatever blessing is there through this covenant we receive because of our obedience which translates as faith. Hallelujah. So let us see the last point. Truth about one's faith and prayer. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. So prayer life is very important. That is what Jesus said. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he said, Let every man pray always. Let not him be faint. Let him not be faint, but let him pray always. Always. Hallelujah. So, here it says, Wherefore, lift up the hands which hangeth down and the feeble knees. Hallelujah. Hands means about faith. Lift up the hands means your lifting up shows you are asking and you are receiving. For both, you need to lift up your hands. If you have faith, you will ask because you don't ask, you don't receive. That's what the word of God says. You don't ask because you don't have faith. Here, stretching out your hand is basically asking and receiving. For this is what is called as faith. It says, you lift up your hands which hang down. It says, uh, you are not, uh, you're hanging down means you're, your faith is weak. You're not in a position to ask or you are not in a position to receive. Don't be like that. The truth based on the faith and prayer. If you have to believe and you have to move forward, you need to have the truth about faith and prayer. If you don't have faith, your hands won't be strong. You should have the faith to go in prayer, ask and receive. Talks about feeble knees. What is knees all about? Knees are to stand. If you don't stand, if you're not in a position to stand, that means your legs are weak. That's why you sit down. Am I right? So if your legs are strong, you will stand for how many over time, how many over time you want. So here it says, uh, let your knees not be feeble. It means uh, you will be in a position to stand strong. Hallelujah. God's word says your, knee, your legs should be like a... The, Hind's legs, hallelujah. Deer's legs. Deer continuously runs and it never sits. It goes on running, running, running here and there. It's got strong legs. Our legs should be like hind's legs, hallelujah. In other words, we should be in a position to, and if you can stand, you can kneel. Am I right? Those who cannot stand, they cannot kneel. So God says, if you have a strong leg, you will, I'm talking spiritually. If you have a strong leg, you will kneel. In other words, if you have a faith in prayer, you will kneel. In other words, you will go humble yourself before God. The reason why people are not humbling themselves, going on their knees and asking God is, that is pride. 
there's no humility. Hallelujah. So they do not pray. There's a truth in praying with uh, the truth. In other words, saying, Lord, I have faith. When I come into your presence, you will give me. We boldly go into the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to receive grace, to help at the time of need. Hallelujah. Every time we have a need, God says, come to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to receive grace, to help at the time of need. In other words, we are going strong with faith and with the prayer, saying that, Lord, I need this, Lord. I'm, here, I'm come here to obtain mercy and to receive grace. So if you obtain mercy and, to, and when you receive grace, that is when your need will be fulfilled. To obtain mercy and to receive grace, you need to go before God in prayer. So anytime you go into the presence of God in prayer to obtain mercy and to receive grace, God is present there to help you. Whatever you need. The salvation, all five areas. God is willing to give it freely because he died for these five things. For deliverance, for healing, for protection, for preservation, for goodness in all areas of our life. The five things, that is the reason why Jesus died on the cross for. And we don't have to accept anything which is short of all these five things. You should say, I need a complete salvation, Lord. I need peace, prosperity in all areas of my life. I need total deliverance. I need total healing. I need total protection. I need preservation. I need prosperity in all areas of my life. I need peace. I need abundance. Hallelujah. So God is more than willing to give us. The Bible says, if he has given, if he has delivered you, his only begotten son, will he not give along with him all other things, what you need, hallelujah. So if you have received salvation, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus, believe me, all the five things in salvation belongs to you. And it comes to us only based on the truth. And these six truths to move on. You need to believe and move on based on this six truth. First is the truth based on the revelation. Second is the truth based on the words of your mouth. Third is the truth based on your prayer. About the five things in salvation. And the fifth, fourth is uh, desire, making room for more with the truth. Fifth is uh, truth about the covenant. And sixth is truth about one's faith and prayer. Hallelujah. I don't know if there is anything which you didn't know, please ask me, at least text me and ask me. You don't have to ask me now. So I will keep it uh, uh, confidentially. Uh, I will explain to you if you have any doubts because these six things are very, very important. It has come directly from God. We need to understand these things. What is the title? Move forward, believe. And others, if you believe, you will move forward. Hallelujah. For that, we need these six truths. Let us stand. Father, we thank and praise you. Father, come.